It is, it's me, it's TRG, the rambling gambler, a vest wearing, ring bearing, son of a salesman. Welcome to episode 36 of our Casino Combat Podcast. According to numerology, the number 36 represents creative energies used to the benefit of all humankind. <laughs> okay, uh, look, the purpose of this podcast is to entertain and educate for the benefit of everyone. So this looks like a, uh, a slam duck theme for the episode. So here we go. Demons and unbelievers, gentlemen, non-binary persons, ladies, do not gamble with money you cannot afford to lose. Do not gamble with money you need to pay your bills. My past performances are not indicative of anyone's future results, including my own. If you have a gambling problem, contact your local problem gambling hotline. If you do not know your local problem gambling hotline number, send an email to help at casinocombat.com. We will find that number for you. We will make it available to you. Everything I'm going to share with you in this podcast is based in fact. Names and dates have been altered to protect the innocent and the guilty. Minor items, unrelated outcomes may be omitted in the interest of brevity and clarity. Okay, disclaimer firmly in place. Let's run down all the basics and then I'll lay out this episode of the podcast for you. First and most important, it has been two weeks and I have not heard an update yet from Guardian or the Jet. So still waiting, guys. If you're listening, I hope you're still partying. I hope it worked out well. Uh, next, there are games in the podcast. The details of how to play are covered in episode 22. There are prizes, there have been winners, and you are welcome to play and win. I've written a book that explains how I approach slot machine play with a mostly casino combat uh, focus and point of view. It's free. If you want a copy, email me via trg at casinocombat.com. Spell combat with a K, of course, and then put two words for me. Slot tactics in the subject line. An automated bot will email you a link so you can download a copy of the ebook. We had another good week with this uh, with this strategy, by the way. Between me, Mrs. TRG and myself, we went 8-1 uh, and one this week. Eight winning machines out of nine, with two machines paying out triple digits. Obviously, that doesn't happen every time. I've shown you that it's not perfect, but this is at least the third or fourth time that we've had these long streaks like this where machine after machine after machine just pays out. It's all in the book. If you want it, help yourself. Casino Combat is busy on social media. Thanks to Billy with the great last name and T-Rex. We are on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You are encouraged to participate by liking, reviewing, sharing, subscribing, all that social media stuff. That all helps us out. All the links are on the Casino Combat website. There is a Casino Combat channel on YouTube. And more importantly, there is a boot camp playlist that covers all the core concepts of Casino Combat in short segments. You can learn the fundamentals of gambling for a profit in less than 90 minutes. And you get to skip my attempts at humor. And you also miss the stories. If you like the stories, not going to help you there. So... How are we going to creatively benefit mankind during this episode? Um, well, humankind emailed me some questions this week, so I'm going to start by answering those in just a few minutes. Then in the core concept segment, I'm going to revisit TRG wagering system number one. It's been a long time since we discussed this important technique, and some of the events this week kind of point me in that direction. I told you last episode that I was going to be busy with work, so probably no gambling till the weekend. Things did not work out exactly that way. Uh, kind of because of work, as a matter of fact. So, I have plenty to share with you in the travel segment. Plenty of results. Plenty of gambling got done this week. We will, of course, finish up in the VIP lounge. And I have for you this week the tale of Mr. Busta Rooney. A fun and interesting blackjack player, uh, but not a winning one. So, that's kind of our roadmap. Here we go. Let's get started. What? What? So, as I've mentioned, my sons ask questions about casinos and gambling, and so do folks who listen to the podcast. I got a couple of questions last week that I wanted to share with all of you and respond to. So, first up, Arthur R. wrote, I don't see how any of your nonsense can possibly work. I usually just play slots, but this week, I took my $100 of gambling money and tried to play Baccarat instead, since you say that the house has less of an advantage in that game. It didn't matter if I bet player or bank, I lost. After six bets, I didn't have enough money to keep playing, so maybe you can explain how this magically works for you, but not for me. <laughs> okay, Arthur, thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to email me. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. There really isn't any magic to any of this, and I've tried to be very open about the fact that nothing I talk about works every time at every table at every casino. 
That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm attempting to have more money at the end of the month than I had at the beginning of the month while also winning enough to pay for the costs involved with going to a casino. So for me, this would have just been one losing table, and those happen all the time. All the time. All of that said, with what you shared, let me make some observations and suggestions to tighten up your game and get it a little closer to mine. First, you said $100 was your gambling money, and after six bets you were out of money to gamble with. So I'm thinking the table was a $15 minimum table. For me, that combination is a don't gamble today combination. To even consider playing $15 Baccarat, I would want to have $15 times 10 bets per table times three tables, $450 minimum as my bankroll for gambling at a $15 level. If I didn't have that much money I could afford to lose, I wouldn't gamble until I had that much available. Now, since it's Baccarat, you can get by with $100 instead of $150 per table, since you don't have to worry about splitting or doubling as you do in Blackjack, but you still need at least three tables to really give yourself a chance at success. Minimum. The next thing I noticed is that you said it didn't matter if you bet bank or player, you still lost. My approach is to make the bank bet since it's a slightly better bet. But if you want to bet player, go ahead. That really doesn't matter that much. But I would say pick one and don't jump back and forth trying to guess what is going to happen next. One of the primary goals of everything I do is to try to take things like guessing out of the process. So I recommend picking one of the two bets and staying with it. Finally, since you said six bets, it sounds to me like the bets were all $15. I'd have made the second and third bets larger after losing the first bet. And I'm going to discuss how much I would have increased things by and why in the core concept segment in a few minutes. But I don't recommend just flat betting until the money is gone. So a bigger bankroll, a more consistent wager selection, and a better betting strategy will all help you have more success in my experience. So pull together that bigger bankroll before you head back to the casino to try things out again. And in the meantime, you might find it useful to listen to the boot camp playlist on YouTube. It explains my entire process in more detail than I can in just one segment and in just one answer. Thank you so much for writing. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. My second question this week is from podcast listener Gail M. And Gail writes, I love the podcast. It's really showed me some different ways to look at casinos and gambling. I tried Baccarat for the first time on my last casino trip. The first table didn't go very well, but I left with a small loss. And then tried again at a different table a little later. I won enough at that table to more than make up for my loss and left the casino with a small profit. <laughs> That's excellent. Other than winning, which is fun, I found Baccarat a little boring. I'm thinking of switching to Blackjack, but a friend of mine says it's complicated and that Blackjack players are mean if you do something wrong. Is that correct? I'm a little intimidated by table games in general. Any advice? Great questions, Gail. First off, I'm happy that you were able to, to apply things I've talked about and capture a profit during your first attempt. And approaching a new table game can be intimidating for anyone, you know, myself included. You know, put me at a Mississippi stud table or a, a Texas Hold'em table and, you know, carnival games, I'm going to be intimidated too. I'm going to have no clue what's going on. As far as blackjack players being mean if you do something wrong, yeah, yeah honestly, look, sometimes that happens, but not often. And worst case, you switch tables if someone has poor manners. But let me offer a few suggestions for making the process as smooth as possible for you. First... If you can, find out the table rules for the specific casino you're going to gamble at, and then print a correct strategy card for those rules. Google will help you with that. It's no problem. If you can't find that information easily about the casino's rules, print a strategy card for a 4-8 to eight deck game where the dealer hits all soft 17s. That's going to be pretty close for your first time, close enough to perfectly correct for most shoe-based blackjack games. And then you can tighten that up once you know the rules a little bit more. Make that strategy card obvious when you sit down at the table. I find that this is a visual clue to everyone involved that you're just learning the game. Generally, other players and dealers are happy to help someone who's just learning. Next, if a game is already in progress when you sit down, 
look at the other players and ask them something like, do you want me to wait? Or are you on a streak? I don't want to mess up your game. This is part of the etiquette of blackjack. Since a player joining the game changes the cards for everyone, it's good to ask. The other players may say, hey, come on in. Or they may say, could you wait a couple hands? Or could you wait till I lose a hand? And that's cool. If they ask you to wait, wait. It's only going to be a few minutes. And extending them that courtesy of asking will do a lot to build goodwill from the other people that you're playing with. Finally, and this is actually an observation my good friend The Walking Wikipedia made, try not to sit at third base as a beginner, which is what blackjack players call the seat at the dealer's right hand. Because the person at that seat plays last, and that impacts the game for everyone. It gets the most attention from other players for that reason. I know I said finally, but really finally, one more thing. Just up, be up front and share with the dealer and or the other players that you're just learning the game. In my experience, everyone will generally go out of their way to try and help you. So, a correct or mostly correct strategy card. Ask before you enter the game. Don't sit at third base if at all possible. And let people know that you are just learning. Easy stuff once you know. And knowing is half the battle. Please, feel free to let me know how things go for you. I can't wait to hear your results. I really can't. I hope it goes great. All right, I'm feeling good about this. I feel like answering those questions benefits humankind. Right along number 36, just as we need to. Let's see if I can keep things going in the core concept segment. One of the core concepts of Casino Combat is using a wagering system with both progressive and regressive elements. And just as a quick review, a progressive element in a wagering system is making a larger bet as a result of a winning wager or set of wagers. A regressive element is making a larger bet as a result of a losing wager or set of losing wagers. So many years ago, I was thinking about the fact that blackjack, baccarat, and some roulette bets, they're basically a 50-50 bet. And I wanted to create a wagering system that would generate profits even if you won just one-third of the wagers that you made. It seemed like if I was supposed to win half the bets, there was a good chance that many times I would at least win one-third of the bets. So I created my first wagering system from scratch, and for simplicity's sake, I now just call it TRG Wagering System 1. And the system itself is is really pretty simple. If you make and lose a one-unit bet, you start the regressive part of the system. Your next bet is two units, a classic martingale. If you win that, you have a profit of one unit and you start over with a one unit bet. If you lose the two unit bet, your third wager is four and a half units, kind of uh, a bigger martingale. If you win that, you have a profit of one and a half units as a result of winning one third of the wagers in a 50-50 game. If you lose the third bet, I strongly recommend leaving the table and taking a break. But if you've been winning for a while and a three unit bet wouldn't push you into a loss for the table, you can make a fourth three unit bet, which is just a recovery bet. It's just a get some things back and stay in the game bet. If you win that, you will still have lost four and a half units over the four hands in the set. But if you've been winning, minus four and a half units is better than leaving a table minus seven and a half units, which is where you would have been after bet three. The fourth bet wall winning is something I would use often when I was gambling with Mrs. TRG or with Gabriel or the walking Wikipedia. We'd been winning and the hope was that a winning session would continue. Either way, a fourth loss at a 50-50 game and I'd be done. Now this system, TRG Wagering System 1, does not aggressively try to go after long strings of wins. The assumption is that we're trying to win a third of the bets and we're trying to protect those wins if we start to get a string of wins while getting a little benefit out of that longer string. So on the progressive side of things, after two winning bets in a row, the third bet would be one and a half units. If we lose that, we still have a half unit win. If that bet is one, then the next bet adds another half unit for a total of two units. We're still holding on to profits on this. If that bet is one, the following bet adds another half unit for a total of two and a half units. In roulette or baccarat, I'd continue to add a half unit until a loss occurs. At blackjack, 
I cap that increase at two and a half units total for as long as the winning continues because I don't want to just press and press and press and press and then need to split and double and blow the whole thing up. Whenever that loss occurs as I've been pushing up, I just go back to my one unit bet and then you just start the process all over again. Easy, simple, just trying to win a third of the hands in a 50-50 game. So that's TRG Wagering System 1. I thought we were due for a review, been thinking that for a while, and then Arthur's question came in, and that just kind of convinced me this was the right week to, uh, to go back through this. So after a losing week last week, I was ready for a new beginning. I mean, knowing full well that every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end, but uh, let's do the travel segment and see if I got that new beginning, and I'll share how things went this week. <laughs> So I really didn't expect to do much gambling until the weekend this past week because of work commitments, but things don't always go as planned. Uh, The one day I finished up early and I was at the client near the MGM slot parlor and I needed to get gas. So I went and used my, uh, my MGM rewards membership to get discounted gas. And I figured I might as well see if I had any free slot play available. And I didn't. So I decided... Time to gamble some of my own money with the expectation that in a month or so, the free play would return. Even if I had a loss, I'll probably make it up on the free play over time. My slot strategy quickly kicked out a nice win uh, without a lot of risk. So money in pocket, gas in the tank at a discount, continued to head home, stopped at that second slots only casino, which is on on my way home, as we've discussed in the past. And I was more than happy to let them comp me lunch after I won a few bucks on the free play they gave me. Very much just side hustle, grindy kind of thing. Not exactly live in a casino lifestyle by any means. But free money, discounted gas, and lunch on the way home from a client, that's great. It's a great way for me to work the side hustle into everything else. And I talked to Gabriel some during the week, and he reminded me that our local casino was giving away a Swarovski, going to struggle with that one, folks, Swarovski, there we go, necklace for Valentine's Day on Friday. And I told him that, you know, unless one of my clients you know, down in that area needed me on Friday, I probably wouldn't make the trip down um, just, just for the necklace, since we were leaving for a lot of casino time on Saturday morning. But... As often occurs, a customer 10 minutes from the casino did need me on Friday, and as I was finishing up with them, it was just about the time the giveaway was scheduled to start, so I went down, picked up the necklace, picked up some free slot play, made a few bucks on that, and well worth the the very short five-minute drive that, that I made. Worth my time. So on Saturday, Mrs. TRG and I made our way south and west about five and a half hours to that Caesars property which we've been getting to enjoy almost every holiday weekend. We were there about a month ago for the uh, MLK holiday. So we pass a whole bunch of casinos. It's kind of weird. I mean, for a group of states that didn't even have casino gambling 10 or 15 years ago, I think we passed six or seven casinos in three states to, to get to this Caesars property. And so we decided to visit a new one this time. On our way down, we stopped at a Boyd Family Casino, uh, not sure if you're familiar, but the Boyd family of casinos, they have a bunch of uh, a bunch of station casinos in the Orleans out in the Las Vegas area, not on the Strip or downtown. Now well, they may have one downtown, um, and then all over the the Midwestern United States, they have casinos all kinds of places. So we stopped by one of their properties uh, just to kind of take a break halfway, see something new. I collect casino chips from the casinos I gamble in. Just always keep a couple $1 chips. So stopped, played some blackjack, won some money at a blackjack table, collected some new chips, uh, hit a slot machine, won some money on the slot machine. Just uh, break up the drive, as I said, see something new. Um, The Caesars Casino, which you know we love, uh, they gave us uh, a, a partial room comp for Saturday night. They comped us fully on Sunday night. And, of course, we didn't pay resort fees because I've managed to reach that tier in their reward system that they take care of the resort fees, too. In addition to the room comp, they gave us reward credits to spend on stuff, free table bets, free slot bets, a Swarovski uh, pendant and earring set on Saturday. Got better on that one. A different Swarovski uh, earring set on Sunday, as well as a Valentine's Day food comp on Sunday. So lots of crystal jewelry this week, all the way around. 
And all in all, the gambling for our weekend went very well. As I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, seven of the eight slot machines we played put a profit in our pocket, combined with the MGM machine I played early in the week. Uh, my slot tactic strategy created profits at eight of nine slot machines in one week. We won almost two days' pay during the trip. A recurring observation was how much we need to trust that what we do will work out if we just stick to our plans. Several times, either Mrs. TRG or myself kind of wanted to bail on a slot machine that wasn't working out. We stuck to the plan, made the appropriate bets, worked our way through the system, and then we finished up with a nice profit from the machine. And on another occasion, I played my potential last hand before a negative exit four times at a blackjack table, but I stayed on plan, and I won each time, and I stayed on the table, and eventually I left that table with a nice win. And I had Arthur's email on my mind, and I understand that if it's challenging for us to trust the process in some situations, it would be even more difficult for someone just trying these things for the first time to, to have that trust in me. So I get it. I understand it. I experience it too. And if you're doing some of this stuff for the first time, then I'm going to say, stick with the plan. It's not always going to work, but it's going to work a bunch of times. And you're going to be surprised how many times that when you feel like you want to bail, you stick with the plan, you do what I've talked about, and you're going to end up winning money, not losing money. Or you're going to keep that loss small. So that's our week this week. Five casinos, plenty of comps and gifts, a nice profit from enjoying and trusting the process. Uh, next week, got some family stuff on the weekend, so I'm probably just going to do, uh, I think, we'll see, probably just a trip to uh, the home casino this week to uh, take advantage of our free stuff over there. But come back next week, I'll let you know how it went. I'm sure our VIP lounge is open by now. Please join me for the table of Mr. Busta Rooney. A little bit of the bubbly. Welcome to the VIP Lounge, our virtual space to share stories over drinks. Virtual drinks, unless you pour something while you listen, which is fine and great and encouraged, unless you're driving. As always, on the virtual side, we have the best top shelf bottles, beer, wine, artisanal, handcrafted, locally bottled pop. We also have sodas as well as still and sparkling waters. Help yourself. On the non-virtual side, I have some caramel bourbon that I picked up from a small distillery we visited this week to take a break from the casino. So I'll have a legit artisanal handcrafted caramel bourbon today in our VIP lounge. And I thought today I would share the tale of Mr. Busta Rooney. I suppose there is a bit of a teach here, but really this is just a story about the kind of interesting people you meet in a casino or perhaps that many of us get interesting in a different way when we are in casinos. Anyway, we met Mr. Buster Rooney this weekend. He was a young man, barely of age to gamble and drink, and obviously he was enjoying the drinking part of this as much as the gambling part of his evening. And there's no judgment there. You know, me and uh, Mrs. TRG, we made extensive use of the VIP lounge at the casino as well. So we can't fault him for that. But Mr. Buster Rooney joins us at a blackjack table, and very shortly he is dealt a king and a five for a total of 15, with the dealer showing an eight. Normally you would take a card here, but he doesn't take a card. Mrs. TRG gets the card he would have taken, a four, which is a good card for her. It gives her a total of 20. My hand is fine as dealt. I don't take a card. And as the dealer gets ready to play her hand, the battle cry rings out for the first time from our new friend. Here we go, Busta Rooney! The dealer has a 10 underneath for a total of 8. She has no reason to take a card. No bust for her, and Mr. Busta Rooney loses. Short time later, our guy has a total of 8 on his first two cards versus a dealer's 5. So... Ignoring basic strategy completely, he doubles, and he is calling for a Buster Rooney again. Gotta have that Buster Rooney. And he gets a two on his hand, giving him a total of ten. And, of course, the dealer doesn't bust, and he loses. Look, needless to say, this went on for the better part of an hour. Uh, as Mrs. TRG and I are gradually adding to our wins, a hand here, a hand there, staying on the table, 
Mr. Buster Rooney remains convinced that the dealer is always going to bust. It is always going to be a Buster Rooney in the world of Mr. Buster Rooney. But no matter how much he calls for a Buster Rooney to happen for him, in various strange situations where he shouldn't be looking for the dealer to bust, they're not happening. He's not getting his magical Buster Rooney's in any way, shape, or form. We even tried to help him out. We did. We, we were more than willing, as I said, we'd been in the VIP lounge having a couple. We were more than willing to join him in calling for Buster Rooney's in appropriate situations. We actually watched him lose a good bit before we found an end point where we both had a profit and we decided to take a break and actually take a break and go back to the VIP lounge for a cocktail. But as we're leaving the table, we had talked about the podcast a little bit and he's calling for a Buster Rooney again and he takes him in and he looks at me and he says, I expect to hear about Buster Rooney's in the podcast this week. Not sure if he's going to listen. Not sure if he's going to remember that he asked me to do this. But here you go, my man. I try to satisfy requests whenever I can. It is none of my business, sir. I hope you get all the Buster Rooney's you need. But by observation, if you're listening, basic strategy, a better wagering system will go a long way toward helping you win the game of casino gambling. Uh, probably a bit more than calling for Buster Rooney's in strange situations. If you're playing the casino chip game, there are 10 in this episode of the podcast. A couple before we get to the end, but there are 10 total. Please tip your waitresses, tip your bartenders, tip your dealers. Don't tip away your wins. If you want to tip your casino coach, you can go to anchor.fm slash casino combat and click on the donate link. I have spoken. Everything you heard here is true from a certain point of view. It's time for leaving, and I hope you understand, I was born a rambling man. If you have questions, send them to questions at CasinoCombat.com. If you have techniques to share, send them to what I do at CasinoCombat.com. Don't forget, we spell combat with a K. Love it, hate it, it don't matter. Please share with your family and friends. Goodbye, everyone.